back, boys, to Merc Mondays. My name's Rob. This is Sarah. This series has been about our 1981 CB Avenger project boat. We picked this thing up a few weeks ago for 500 bucks, and it came with this motor, which is a 1986 Mercury Black Max XR2 150. So we have been struggling with overheating issues on this thing since we got it. It, it runs well, it starts, um, it's fun to drive, but as soon as I get up on plane, it just starts overheating. We have high water pressure. This is gonna be a super in-depth video with a lot of technical information because we're doing a deep dive on this motor to try to figure out why it's overheating. In this episode, we're gonna be checking the temp gauge and the temp sender to make sure that's working because we had some people suggest that maybe that's fine. We're gonna pull the lower unit again. Sarah's gonna to remember to leave it forward. Then we're gonna be doing a flush of the whole block to try to get anything out of there that might be causing a blockage. After that, I'm gonna get frustrated and start pulling parts off this thing. So we're gonna pull the heads, we're gonna pull the exhaust divider plate, we're gonna borrow my neighbor's hoist. We're gonna pull the whole power head off. We're gonna just gonna start replacing things and pulling stuff apart and seeing if we can find why this thing is overheating. Now, I do wanna say I have never done this before. So if you see something specifically in the midsection area that I am doing wrong, please leave a comment if you see something that might be a clue as to why this thing is overheating. We're gonna start with a steamy clip from the last time we had it on the water that Sarah took of the engine. I don't think this was smoke. I'm pretty sure this was steam. Then we're gonna get into the temp center stuff. So on the back of the port side head, this is where the temperature sender is for the gauge. On the other side, you're gonna find a similar looking sensor that is for the temperature alarm. All right, so now that we have this loose, what we're gonna do is we're going to get a pot of boiling water, use the IR thermometer gun, wait till the pan says it's about 150 degrees. We're gonna plop this in here and we're gonna see what the temperature gauge is doing because the thermostats on this are I think 146 degrees. If this is running in the middle, I would think 150 degree water here would be about dead even in that gauge. That's an assumption, but this is what we're gonna go with because I cannot find the actual data on this little sender here to figure out if it's working correctly. 184 degrees, so this is gonna still be a little hot. All right, we're gonna leave this in here for like 10 seconds. Sarah's next to me, not in frame, wave. <laughs> <laughs> So basically the results are the first time we did it when the water was about 180 degrees, the gauge read about half. We did it a couple more times, the water was around 150 and it was reading around a quarter to a half somewhere. So um, I think this gauge is working fine. I think the sender is working fine, which means we have some blockage somewhere in here. And I can either drop the lower unit and try to flush it out with a garden hose, maybe try back flushing the thermostats. I guess let's do that. Other than that, we have to pull the heads. So. And we're gonna remember to leave it in forward this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's helping. Nice. Yeah, I learned. All right, so what I'm using for the flush is one of these guys. These are the things that go on your uh, kitchen or bathroom sink and adapt it to um, your garden hose if you're gonna turn your sink into a hose or something. Anyway, it has a rubber thing with a clamp. We're gonna throw that up onto the water tube, but it should start coming out the telltale because on this engine, you do not need to wait for the thermostats to open for it to start peeing. Oh. I knew that that was what you were trying to do. I like literally, I'm like, isn't this gonna get me wet? You're such an ass. <laughs> I think the majority of the water coming out right here is just from the water spraying out of the hose. Yeah. I have a feeling that the adapter plate between the mid and the power head is clogged or someone put in the wrong one. Something is weird because I'm getting like no water out of the exhaust. So I don't, I don't know what we're gonna find out, but uh, we're gonna put it on time-lapse and tear into this thing and just take it apart and see what we see. All 
All right, we have pulled the exhaust plate and this is what I'm looking at. This is what I found in the exhaust plate. Found chunks of impeller, chunks of plastic, chunks of some gasket material. So there is a bunch of crap clogging the cooling system of this engine. Let's do the heads and see what we find out. And if that doesn't tell us anything, we gotta pull this whole thing. So let's, uh, let's get at it. So we are rapidly losing daylight and the mosquitoes are coming out. They want my blood. And we're checking the cooling passages. I don't see any blockages. Sarah, you got a phone on you or anything with a light? I think this looks fine. I don't see anything. I don't see signs of anything. So what we're going to do is give up for now because it is past sunset and it's going to start raining really soon. But I am excited about this. We took off the cowl support to hold on this clamshell cowl, which is admittedly a good looking cowl, but do you know what looks better? Oh boy, my friend. <laughs> my friend. All right, so we're about to pull the power head, but today was awesome. We had a carbon fiber flight board e-foil thing. Super fun. If you want to check that out, I'm going to put a video to that right here. We're going to start by removing the socket that I left on the engine. And then we are going to disconnect the fuel lines, the shift cables, and the harness. I hear that unplugs somewhere. I really don't want to have to disconnect all this crap. Maybe we don't need to do any of this because my goal here is to just lift the power head up, pull the gaskets off of it and see if there's anything blocking it, which I'm sure there is, and put new gaskets in it and then drop it back down. So let's, let's live dangerously and leave everything connected. What have I learned so far? Well, the front two nuts are kind of captured. You can't really get them off because they're, they're stuck against this. So I'm gonna have to start lifting this thing. Got this off, got this off, got those two. This one, the stud pulled out of the block. Not really the end of the world, just kind of annoying. Uh, this one, those two, and that one again is captured. So that's a total of 10, which means now we're gonna raise this thing. In order to raise it, what you do is you pop the cover off the flywheel cover here and you buy a flywheel puller slash lifting eye off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below, but this is kind of nice because then you get a tool to remove your flywheel and a lifting eye. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this on there, get that going and pull her off. We'll have lift off. Okay, so it's next morning. The power head did not pop off overnight like I was hoping it would. I think it's this stud right here, maybe this one. I'm gonna try heating these studs up a little bit and then spraying it with more croil. If not, I think we're gonna have to go to an air hammer or something and try to like push up on them with the tension. I'm not really sure why these things are holding so bad, but this is what's keeping it on here. So we're gonna attack it. All right, boys, we have liftoff. At this point in the process, it's really important that you do this. Hello? Hey, can you bring me a beer? Sure. Whoop, whoop. There should be something, and maybe it's above this gasket here, that is blocking a bunch of crap to prevent the water from exiting the block. There's that would explain- standing water here, is that normal? I don't know. Okay. I don't know anything, Sarah. <laughs> you know lots of things. You can see that I definitely had some corrosion on this longer bolt. This is why the power head was not coming off. I used a combination of heat, leverage, and then I think the magic thing at the end of the day was the impact hammer. So just took that up to the air compressor, started wailing on the end of these studs, and away she goes. Now we're going to look for the blockages. And 
Ew, that's nasty. I want to see why the water is not coming out of the block. So, I saw a bunch of stuff in here, in the coolant passages. While this is off, we're also going to take compressed air, blow into these coolant passages and see if stuff blows out the bottom of the block. The other thing I'm noticing is it looks like there's standing water in here and I'm assuming this is the water coming out of the block because you'd think that the water would be spraying the exhaust since these are the exhaust ports. So I'm guessing this is the water going up and right now it's not draining, which I guess makes, or why is it not draining? There's no water pump on the bottom of it. What's up with that? I really don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Another big chunk of water pump. All right, so here's what I found out. I have not seen any major blockages anywhere in the block, but I did see this, which looks like a mixture of water and oil, and it's milky, and it's in the cylinder here. There's also kind of a wash of the top of the piston there. Now, I think a little bit of wash spots, probably normal, but, this one is pretty big and I don't think there should be water in the cylinder there. So here are the two heads and again you can see, see that milky color? That's water and oil mixed together. Now, see there's more right there though. I guess if I had a leaky head gasket that could explain the high pressure gauge when I get on plane and it could explain the heat because the heat is just like instantaneous. So that could be some of that power and heat just getting into the cooling system. Either way, what we're gonna do is we're now going to lift the block back off the mid and I'm gonna blow everything out with compressed air. Then we're gonna reassemble this with all new gaskets and hope for the best. of life. <laughs> Promising. <laughs> Sink us. Mm -hmm. 